If you follow Space News, you may have seen recent reports about how in June 2024, China became the first country ever to return samples from the far side of the moon. This may have gotten you wondering, why is it that we can only ever see one side of the moon? Why does the other side perpetually face away from us? Well, this phenomenon called tidal locking isn't just limited to the moon. All of the large moons in the solar system are tidally locked to their corresponding planet. Many exoplanets that we discover are thought to be tidally locked to their star. One can easily imagine a scenario where the same thing happened to the Earth. What would it be like to live in a world where the sun never set on one side of the planet, casting perpetual daylight, while the other was forever plunged into eternal night? If you'd like to see these types of videos more often, like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Though tidal locking can happen between two bodies of similar size, like pairs of binary stars, typically a smaller satellite object, like a moon, is more likely to become tidally locked to the body it orbits. Let's take the example of a planet-moon pair. The planet exerts a pretty significant gravitational force on the moon's surface. The side of the moon facing the planet experiences a stronger force than the side facing away. This so-called tidal force stretches the moon's structure, kind of like a rubber band turning the moon from a round object into a more egg-shaped one. But since this process is slow, by the time the moon's surface has bulged out, it is rotating away from the planet. The planet's gravity pulls on the bulge, causing the moon's rotation to slow down. This keeps happening until the time it takes for the moon to complete one full orbit around the planet is the same as the time it takes for it to complete one full rotation around its own axis. Since one side is now perpetually facing the planet, its tidal bulge is no longer shifting relative to the planet. The spin rate stops changing and the moon becomes locked in this stable state. Hence, the name tidal locking. This process can take billions of years, as it did with the Earth-Moon system, and it happens faster when the two bodies are closer. Since the Sun is so far away, it does not exert enough force to tidally lock us in a reasonable time frame. It will become a red giant and expand until it engulfs both the Earth and Moon before something like that can happen. But it's still fun to imagine what the world would look like if it did. On the Sun-facing side, the unrelenting solar radiation would create a scorching environment. With no night to provide respite, temperatures would soar to extreme levels, making the conditions on Earth's hottest deserts look like a joke. Temperatures would probably exceed 100 Celsius, the boiling point of water, rendering much of the sunlit side inhospitable to pretty much all life as we know it. The heat would cause the atmosphere to expand, which would result in a drop in pressure. Convection currents would drive hot air from the equator towards the poles, where it would cool and sink, creating a massive, planet-wide circulation system. The constant influx of solar energy would probably lead to persistent high-pressure systems and fierce, unending storms as the atmosphere attempts to balance the temperature gradients. The oceans facing this side would lose a lot, if not all of their water, to evaporation. This would potentially thicken the atmosphere up quite a bit though it would be counteracted somewhat by the fact much of the oceans on the night side would freeze, depriving the atmosphere of a large source of water vapor. Nevertheless, the thickened atmosphere could provide some marginal protection from the sun's relentless radiation. Conversely, the dark side of the Earth would be a realm of perpetual night and freezing temperatures. With no sunlight to warm the surface, temperatures would plummet quickly falling below zero Celsius, turning that side into a frozen wasteland. Water vapor in the atmosphere would begin to freeze, while the other atmospheric gases would sink lower thanks to the cold, causing an increase in pressure. With a low pressure atmosphere on the hot side and a high pressure atmosphere on the cold side, the pressure gradient would cause winds to flow at incredible speed from one side to the other. 
Although this weather system could help heat the cold side and cool down the warm side somewhat, the result probably wouldn't be enough to make both sides livable again. The most interesting region on this hypothetical Earth would be the Terminator Line, the narrow zone where the day side meets the night side. While the Terminator on our rotating Earth moves at roughly 1,000 mile per hour across the planet's surface, this stationary twilight zone on a tidally locked Earth could potentially be the most habitable area on the planet, balancing between the extremes of heat and cold. In this zone, temperatures could be moderate enough to support liquid water. The constant twilight would create a unique environment where the sun hovers perpetually on the horizon, neither rising nor setting. While most of the Terminator line would be over the ocean, as long as humanity wasn't too unlucky, there would still probably be enough land to host a decently sized population. Weather patterns in the Terminator zone would be complex and dynamic. As the atmosphere flows from the hot side to the cold side, clouds could start to form over the Terminator line and dump an enormous amount of water in the form of torrential rainfall. While a never-ending supply of fresh water would be a lifesaver, flash floods could wipe out settlements and agriculture, making civilization nearly impossible. If life were to exist, it would have to adapt to these extreme conditions. Photosynthetic life forms could develop to utilize the dimmer twilight, possibly becoming more efficient at capturing and using light. Biological processes called circadian rhythms, which rely on a day-night cycle and use the sun's activity over 24 hours to calibrate the organism's biological clock, would probably be lost over time through evolution. Ecosystems would probably have the easiest time thriving in these conditions, possibly resembling those found in Earth's deep ocean trenches, where life adapts to low light and high pressure. For humans to survive, they would need to settle in the Terminator Zone, though habitation might also be feasible underground. The challenges would be significant, but not insurmountable. Advanced technology would be essential for building habitats that could withstand the extreme weather and temperature fluctuations. Energy could be harvested from unlimited solar power on the Terminator line, or especially on the day side, and geothermal energy on the night side. Solar panels perform their best when they are kept cool, so they would be inefficient or potentially unusable without some form of active cooling if they were placed on the day side. Agriculture would need to be adapted to the constant twilight, possibly using artificial lighting to supplement the natural dim sunlight. Robust infrastructure would be required to manage water resources and ensure a stable food supply. A tidally locked earth is a world of stark contrasts, a blistering sunlit hemisphere a frozen pitch black hemisphere and a thin strip of potential safety. While the concept is hypothetical, thinking it through allows us to explore how alien life forms outside our solar system could potentially survive. As our instruments improve and we find more and more weird and wonderful worlds, including Earth-like planets that are tidally locked to their star, we can begin to hypothesize what kind of life or civilization such planets might support and ways by which we could detect them. In contemplating such a scenario, we also gain a deeper appreciation for the dynamic, ever-changing nature of our planet and the unique conditions that allow life to flourish. Picking apart what a tidally locked Earth could look like challenges our understanding of habitability and inspires us to think beyond the familiar confines of our own perspective. Hope you enjoyed taking this journey with us. Please leave us your thoughts in the comments down below and don't forget to ring that bell for those instant notifications. Thanks for watching.